What's up everyone, this is FP Sticks, and in today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you some of the top level information that you need to know in terms of my theory behind uh, fast move timing. So I'm sure you've all experienced it before. You're battling, you're tapping away, you go to queue up your charge move, and your opponent gets an entire free fast move through, all that free energy, and it's, uh, it's very annoying. And so what I'm going to be doing today is really break down my theory and thought process behind a fast move timing. Now, these theories are things that I still need to continue to work on implementing in my own battling, and I highly recommend that you check out Wallower's video on fast move timing as well as his video on fast move denial because a lot of the information that I'm going to discuss in this video is very similar to his approach of this as well. Um, so just a little background, my, like my theory of fast move alignment here, I operate under the assumption that the game might lag or there might be a little bit of desync. So while I've seen a lot of other people talk about aligning fast moves in um, a theoretical way that everything is perfect and the game operates how it's supposed to, in reality, we all know that that is not possible. So this thought process and this method of aligning um, fast moves that I like to use and I, I still need to implement more into my own battle style operates under the assumption that uh, the game might lag, the game might desync. So what we're looking to do is to minimize the amount of free energy that the opponent is going to get through. So again, make sure to check out Wallower's two videos before we jump into this because it's going to cover a lot of um, information uh, and then that way you'll understand a little bit more of what is going on here. So let's jump right into this here. So as most of you probably already know, if you have a good framework and uh, foundation of battle mechanics, um, we kind of break down all of the different duration of fast moves into what are called turns. We have one, two, three, four, and now five turn fast moves. Each turn is half a second long. So if you're musically inclined, you know that this is 120 beats per minute, which goes around this fast. So each one turn fast move, is operating at that speed. Two turns um, is you know 60 beats per minute or one second long. Three turns, one and a half seconds. Four turns, two seconds. And then a five turn move, two and a half seconds long. Very, very long there. But um, the turns are broken down into that amount of duration. And essentially what we're gonna be looking at today is a bunch of different ratios of pairing one particular duration of a fast move up against another and trying to figure out where is the optimal time to throw your charge move to ensure that your opponent gets um, minimal free energy through. Now, the first uh, scenarios that we're gonna talk about are one turn fast moves against um, all of the other durations here. And I didn't include five turn fast move uh, one against five because it's, it's pretty self-explanatory here. But the great thing about one turn fast moves, and this is what we're going to discover as we go through this and um, discuss some of these other ratios, is if you are the person that has the shorter duration of fast move, um, then you have a lot more control on where you're able to queue up your charge move because your fast moves have a shorter duration, so it offers you more flexibility. Um, in general, I find that Pokemon that have shorter duration fast moves do offer you a little bit more flexibility in your gameplay because it allows you to make sack swaps a little bit cleaner. It allows you to queue up your charge move animation um, in a little bit more flexible of a spot. Whereas if you're using a longer duration fast move, um, you're kind of stuck in that duration for a longer period of time. Offers you a little bit less flexibility, but there's a case to be made. There's a lot of really good um, longer duration fast moves, you know, like incinerate, confusion, stuff like that. But so these one turn fast moves against all of the other duration moves, uh, pretty self-explanatory. What we're gonna be talking about here is um, with all of these ratios, like one against two, you reach uh, what I'm gonna call an alignment point or you reach alignment um, when both moves sync up. One concept I also need to mention is anytime a charge move is thrown, the game is going to realign um, the fast moves once again. So if your opponent throws a charge move or if you throw a charge move, you're essentially uh, starting back at square one with this alignment here. So at one against two, every two one turn moves, every two fast moves, you're gonna line up right there. 
You're gonna line up right there. You're gonna line up right there. What we do not want to do is throw the charge move on the alignment. And here's the reason. This, this kind of goes against what a lot of people have been saying in terms of the theory behind fast move alignment. We don't wanna throw on alignment because it's really kind of a 50-50 shot on whether or not your opponent is going to sneak in an entire free fast move. Regardless of if you do fast move denial, which is a mechanic out there, but it's not 100% consistent and it is uh, it does kind of factor in your connection versus your opponent's connection. Um, so if we throw on alignment, sure, there's a chance that your opponent will get no energy through, but there's also an equally likely chance that your opponent will get an entire free fast move through. And if you look at like one against four, that is very, very punishing uh, for them to get four free turns of energy there. So um, what we are going to do is queue up our charge move um, essentially right before they are able to throw another fast move. So one against two, it's very self-explanatory. You're going to throw the charge move um, on odd numbers essentially, right? So after you do one uh, fast move, you can queue it up right there because they're gonna be in the middle of their animation. After three, they're gonna be in the middle of their animation after five, so on and so forth. One against three, it's a very similar thought process here. The, um, we're going to want to cue this on the second uh, or after the second fast move. So right here is where we're going to cue up the charge move. Same with right here, same with right here. And again, the reasoning behind this is we want to throw on the point right before alignment happens so we can maximize the amount of energy that we're gaining in that span of time without um, allowing the opponent to possibly get an entire free fast move through. One against four, same concept here. We're gonna be throwing our charge move after we do three fast moves. And I, I think I do have a video example of this particular one, one against four, because it's a little bit easier to see, so we will get into that. But um, after three, you can see we'll throw right here. Your opponent is only getting essentially one free turn of energy instead of four free turns of energy. You could also throw right here. So let's actually take a look at what this looks like um, um, in the video and I'll discuss what's what's going on in there. So here's an example of one turn versus four turn fast move alignment here. Uh, and when I was doing these battles and, and running these simulations, I was actually operating both phones at once, which was a little bit challenging to do. So uh, you're gonna notice that my opponent, which is on my wife's account, uh, is not gonna be throwing any charge moves. These simulations are purely just uh, for us all to see how this is going to look in practice if everything is, is going correctly here. So this is going to be a licky licky of up against a Hypno, so one turn move of Lick versus Hypno's four confusion. So we know that we want to throw after the third Lick um, because then we will be throwing after the third fast move. So our opponent is only gonna be getting one free turn as opposed to an entire free confusion worth. So let's watch this play out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I throw it right there and no free confusion goes through, which is really, really good. Obviously you can't throw before you actually have the energy. So um, we're gonna count again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Right there, once again, no confusion goes through. And then we should be able to see this one more time here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right there. Once again, no free confusion goes through. So all three queuing of the charge moves there were very consistent in not allowing an entire confusion to go through. And technically what is happening there is the opponent is only getting one free confusion's worth of energy. All right, so let's talk about two turn fast moves now. Now two turn fast moves are extremely common. Lots of Pokemon in the meta learn two turn fast moves as well as three turn fast moves. And so um, especially with the two against three or the three against two. I'll have a couple different video examples um, showcasing different ways that you can play this. Two against three is going to essentially follow the same format as one against two, where uh, once again, we want to queue up our charge move 
um, right before the alignment happens. And we want to do this so we get maximum amount of energy uh, within that turn duration and don't uh, accidentally allow them to get an entire free fast move through. So if you look at the alignment here, um, two against three is going to align after three two turn moves or two three turn moves, right? Pretty basic ratios there, two against three. And so what we want to do is take a look on the three side of things and see where on the two side of things um, is our opponent getting the least amount of free energy. And that's going to occur right here or right here. So after alignment has taken place, so either starting at square one or after the alignment, you want to throw one more fast move and then queue up the charge move. This is gonna guarantee that your opponent is only getting one free turn right here. If I were to queue it up right here, my opponent would be getting two entire free turns worth of energy, which is not great. And if you queue up on the alignment, you run the risk of your opponent getting an entire three turns for free there, which is not great. Um, so let's take a look at um, what this looks like in practice. So in this example, we're gonna see Vigoroth against an Azumarill. Vigoroth is using the two turn fast move counter and Azumarill is using the three turn fast move of bubble. And we're gonna to try to implement this strategy here. So we can count in groups of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one. And we're gonna throw right there on one because we know that that is right after um, alignment takes place and that ensures that they only get one free fast move of energy. So one, and I'm gonna throw right there. This is the great thing about having um, cheaper energy cost charge moves is you can do some back-to-back -back maneuvers like that where you throw one fast move and then queue up the charge move again. Two, three, one, two, three. Here's an example of me doing it incorrectly. So if you noticed, I, I threw on three right there, which is where the alignment occurs, right? The alignment is supposed to occur there. So we can watch this back again, and you'll actually see that my opponent gets an entire free bubble through, which is very unfortunate. So it's kind of good that I messed up here. One, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, that's where alignment is supposed to occur, right? but um, the entire free bubble gets through. Prime example of why we want to um, throw in the particular spot where we should be throwing. So then I'm just gonna be able to counter down the Azumarill here. Um, but that should show you uh, two against three, making sure that, uh, especially with these cheaper energy cost moves like Body Slam, and in this next example, we're gonna see Weather Ball, which is only 35 energy in cost. You're able to really over farm a lot and build up a lot of energy. And then after you throw one of your charge moves, you can throw one more fast move and then queue up another charge move. So now let's take a look at Pelipper against Marowak. It's the same ratio, two against three. Two for wing attack, three for fire spin. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, gonna throw right there on one. My opponent is only getting one free turn of energy, not an entire fire spin worth, which is really good. One, two, three, one. Gonna throw it right there. Once again, same thing is able to occur. Also, when I was doing these simulations, I had to do multiple takes of this because the game kept lagging. And so it was difficult to see this clearly, but one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And so obviously um, in the real life battle scenario, the opponent will be throwing charge moves as well. Uh, but just keep in mind that whenever your opponent throws a charge move, the game is gonna go back to alignment once again. So it's the same thought process there. For two against four, you have two options for where you can queue up your charge move. You can throw right in the middle of the four turn move animation. Um, which this is what we want to strive for to guarantee that we're not throwing on the alignment point Because if you do throw on the alignment point you do run the risk of your opponent getting an entire Free four turn fast move, which is very very devastating. So 
um, we're going to want to throw in the middle of that four turn animation and we can take a look at what that looks like here. So in this matchup, we're going to have Galarian Stunfisk against Hypno. G-Fisk is using Mudshot as the fast move, which is a two turn move, and Hypno is running Confusion, which is a four turn move. So what we want to do is throw in the middle of the Confusion animation. So you can count in groups of two. One, two one and we want to throw on one so it ensures that it's going to be in the middle of this confusion animation again this is so punishing if your opponent gets an entire free confusion worth two one and there's uh, in the middle of the confusion once again one two one two one and you can see every single time it's consistently performing the way that it should the confusion animation is coming through while you're queuing up the charge move but they're only getting two free turns worth of energy instead of a possible four free turns which is um, again very very devastating here so two against four you want to throw right in the middle of the four turn animation for two against five, I don't have a video showcasing this, um, but it's a similar process. You can just take a look at the, the chart here to see where to queue it up. It's looking like um, you can throw two of your two turn fast moves, and that is going to be the optimal point um, because that is right before the alignment point happens. Uh, and, and we do know it's going to take five two turn moves to align with uh, two five turn moves. So it looks like throwing two moves and then queuing up the charge move is going to be the optimal timing for that. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a video showcasing that, but that is going to be um, the optimal throwing point right there. For three against four, uh, this follows the same thought process as two against three or one against two. Whenever you are one turn shorter in duration than your opponent, they always essentially follow the same format here where you're essentially going to want to queue up your charge move one fast turn after the alignment point so you can see when we're at um, the start here right here after we throw one three turn move uh, this is the optimal place to throw because the opponent is only getting one free turns worth of energy if we were to throw right here they'd be getting two free turns worth of energy if we were to throw right here they'd be getting three free turns of energy which is very unfortunate and if we throw on the alignment point once again we know we run the risk of them getting an entire four free turns worth of energy so um, once again we want to throw one fast move after alignment and then queue up the charge move let's take a look at what this looks like so in this particular example i believe we have shift tree against hypno shift tree is running snarl which is a three turn fast move and hypno is running confusion once again which is that four turn move nice thing about shift tree is that it generates energy very quickly so you're going to be able to see i'm able to farm a lot of energy and do some back-to-back -back, uh, mechanics one two three four one so we throw on one no free confusion uh, goes through you can count in groupings of four here because that is where alignment takes place one two three four one I'm gonna throw it right there no free confusion goes through and this shift tree is loaded on energy so i'm gonna do one more snarl and then throw a leaf blade one gonna throw that there obviously foul play is the the right move but i want to get as many charge moves off as possible to showcase this and i can do the same process here i can throw one more snarl and then throw my move and so throughout this entire process yes i could have thrown back to back stacking of the charge move there but once again, you're essentially forcing alignment right there. So there is a risk that your opponent will get an entire free fast move through. Whereas with this strategy, you're consistently still getting a snarl's worth of energy and they're only getting um, that one turn of free energy. And you're guaranteeing that an entire uh, free fast move does not sneak through there. 
For three against five, once again, I don't have a video showcasing this, but if we're looking at this chart here, it looks like this is going to be the optimal placement for queuing up your charge move. You can throw three fast moves and then queue up your charge move because you can see your opponent is only going to be getting one free turn worth of energy right there for three against five. Okay, now we're going to talk about when you are the person that has the longer turn duration fast move. This is um, definitely more challenging uh, to optimize the, the energy gain here, specifically with three against two. Um, and I don't think um, I don't think either options here are are absolutely ideal because one option is that you throw your charge move right here, guaranteeing that your opponent only gets one free fast move of energy. The other option, is you throw on the alignment point, which again, you run the risk of your opponent getting two free turns. Um, with a two turn fast move, it's nowhere near as punishing if your opponent gets two free turns worth of energy. Um, and sometimes what will happen, you'll see in this video example, this is absolutely hilarious because on some of the queuing of the charge moves, I perform fast move denial. And on some of them, I just spam tap my phone as fast as possible. And because of the inconsistency of the game, um, sometimes, uh, like, well, my opponent did not get any free moves every single time that it occurred, even though I was throwing on alignment uh, in the first video example. But if we follow the same theory in practice, technically the most consistent way that you could play this, three against two, is throw in the middle of their um, two turn animation here. So after alignment occurs, you throw one fast move and then throw it there. Same thing here, after alignment occurs, you throw one fast move and then you're gonna wanna queue it up right here. But let's look at this video, cause this is kind of hilarious. I have two different examples um, showcasing this three against two alignment here. So here we're gonna see Azumarill against Defense Deoxys. Azumarill is running bubble, three turn fast move. Uh, Defense Deoxys is running counter, a two turn fast move. In this first example, I throw on the alignment. So I'm throwing every two bubbles and then I'm queuing up my charge move after the second bubble of the cycle. Um, and Cause I wanted to see what would happen here. On some of these fast moves, I perform the fast move denial technique. On some of them, I just mash my phone the entire time. Uh, and you can see how this matchup plays out here. So this is what it looks like when you throw on alignment so we're gonna count in multiples of two here because it's three against two. One, two, one, two, one, two. So I'm gonna throw on two. I do perform fast move denial right here and you can see because I'm clicking, I'm going to click the ice beam and then I immediately start tapping the middle of my phone again, performing the fast move denial technique. And my opponent does not get a free counter through. Okay, was the fast move denial successful? We don't know, because look what happens on this second one. Two, one, two, I'm just mashing my phone. No fast move denial, but my opponent still does not get a counter through. This just showcases the, the inconsistency of, of the mechanics. One, two, one, two, gonna throw it right there. I do perform the fast move denial on that one. My opponent does not get a counter through, but I'm just gonna mash my phone on this next one, still throwing on alignment. One, two, one, two, one, two, just mashing my phone, no free counter goes through. So what does this prove? Absolutely nothing. The only thing that this proves is that uh, the gameplay is still inconsistent. The mechanic is still inconsistent. And so for three against two out of all the possible ratios, uh, this is definitely one of the least punishing. Um, so if you throw on the alignment and you want to risk it uh, and see if your opponent doesn't get any free moves through, you can go for it. Um, but in this next example, we will see um, what it looks like when we throw in a uh, in in the middle of the the animation there. Okay, so that was that was throwing on the alignment. Now we're going to throw. 
uh, after on on our one count here. So one, two, one, two, one, two. And we're gonna throw right here on one. So you can see the opponent is in the middle of their counter animation. They're only getting one free turn worth of energy. So we're gonna do this again. One, two, one, two, and we'll throw on one right here. And once again, they're in the middle of their counter animation. So they're only getting one turn worth of energy. The game lags right there, so this one looks a little bit more awkward. But one, gonna throw right there. Get some really nice lag. Yeah, the, the game kind of stuttered on that one, so that's not a more clear example of this. But in all of these um, examples, the opponent is only getting one free turn of energy. One, two, one, two, and I'm gonna throw on one once again, and they're in the middle of their counter animation. So three against two, honestly, you can play this however you want. You can try to force the alignment or you can follow the theory and throw um, in the middle of their counter animation. So they're only getting one free turn of energy. Uh, this one definitely is the least punishing. So you can play it however you would like. All right, four against three. So if we're looking at the chart here, the optimal point for queuing up the charge move is going to be right here because you can see that the opponent is only going to be getting one free turn worth of energy. So you're going to want to throw two four turn moves and then queue up the charge move animation. Because um, once again, you can see the oppo opponent only gets one free turn. If you were to queue it up right here, they would get two free turns. Uh, if you were to queue it up right um, on the alignment point, then they would obviously p potentially get three free turns there. So we really don't want that to happen. Um, cool, let's take a look at this video. So in this video, we're going to have Electrode running um, Volt Switch, which is a four turn move against Alolan Marowak running Fire Spin, which is a three turn move. And we're gonna follow this theory of throwing on two. So we're gonna count in groupings of three because that's where alignment takes place. That was three, one, two, and I'm throwing the discharge right here. They're at the tail end of their Fire Spin animation. So they're only getting one free turn worth of energy, which is great. I'm gonna throw two more and then queue it up once again. One, two, same thing occurs. They're at the tail end of their fire spin animation. They only get one free turn worth of energy. And then once again, I'm going to throw two more volt switches and then queue it up. One, two, and so you don't need to worry about any fancy uh, technique of, of tapping here if you queue up the, the charge moves on, on those ratios there, because it's gonna guarantee that your opponent is only getting um, that amount of energy through there. Finally, we have four against five. This follows the same theory as two, uh, one against two, two against three, three against four. Um, you're essentially going to wanna throw one after alignment. Right, so we have alignment here, we throw one, and this is the point in time where the oppo opponent only gets one free move of, of energy there. So I hope you all found this video helpful. Everything is easier said than done. And while all of these theories are very sound and they do consistently perform if you can execute them, in the heat of battle, uh, when your opponent is swapping fast and you're having to keep track of their energy as well as your timing, there's a lot of stuff happening um, you know, within the course of a battle. So it's not always easy to allow for this perfect fast move alignment because uh, you also want to make sure that you don't over farm past 100 energy. But these theories are very sound and these are how I like to approach my fast move timing when I play. Um, I do need to get better at these strategies myself um, and because this is going to consistently not allow your opponent to get a bunch of free energy through. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It did take me a lot longer to make it, but uh, this is a very important topic that will definitely elevate your level of gameplay if you're able to get consistent um, at it. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.